Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of What's Happening. I'm Elliot Margolis, your host with my co-host, Gail Burke, and our guest today is Chris Westray from New Hope Courses. And in today's day and age where there are so many people starting to do homeschooling, Gail and I thought that this would be a really great subject because that's what Chris does is helps people with homeschooling or does some teaching. And uh, I think I think you should be, this will be a very interesting program. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you for having me. Uh, why don't you, first of all, just describe New Hope Courses, what you do and, and why you do it. New Hope Courses is here to offer supplemental courses for home educating families. And so if you think about taking on the full education of your child, there are going to be some subjects that you're going to feel comfortable with and do very well and others that you'll need some help with. And there are a variety of ways to get that help. But what my organization does is essentially to offer those courses kind of in the university model where they can choose the courses that they need and um, come and work with uh, other you know, groups of kids uh, and and mentors who are outside of the home who are professionals in their field. So it, it gives parents, again, that that choice to decide which pieces of their education they want to uh, they want to delegate to somebody else. So we, we, in a way, we're a broker <laughs> between the, the parents, uh, families and and the educators that we hire. And what kind of courses do you teach? I mean, you, you know, like this, some people might not feel good at math. Some might not feel capable to teach French, for argument's sake. We teach all of the main subjects across the curricula. There uh, are, are some uh, areas where we're just not able to go. Uh, we teach Spanish, not French, for instance, but we have taught Latin. We can basically give you your core curriculum uh, for middle and high school. So the parents get to choose whatever they want as a supplement to what they're doing. That's right. Now, do they, the students come to you? Do you do it online? We meet in the middle of Oxford, and students come to us for the courses that they signed up for. They'll often stay for lunch and have social time together and, and, and uh, study hall. Uh, sometimes study hall, of course, turns into uh, time with friends, which we think is great. Um, but yeah, they come to the central organization, the central location to uh, to take their courses. Okay. And how have you been doing during this COVID problem? Have you been able to remain open, or were you forced to close down for a while? It's been a real challenge. We we were forced to close down with everyone else last year in March. Mm -hmm. And we were able, but though we didn't miss a class, we, we immediately jumped to Zoom and were able to continue throughout the year. This year, we have mostly been on site. We did have a couple of months when the numbers were very high and we had to go offline for a little while, or I should say online. Um, but we're, we're back and we are now, uh, we are uh, in the next week going to fully open so that everyone who wants to be can be on site. Very good. All right. Now, why do people homeschool? That's such a great question. And I think there are probably a thousand answers. <laughs> so I tend to think that all of the answers are, are under the umbrella of parents for whatever reason, at a particular time, believing that it's important that they begin to make the decisions about their kids' education at that time. And so we have folks who have homeschooled since the kids were very young and they're graduating their kids out of their home academies. We have folks who come in for a year because they need a year off. Some folks take middle school off and do homeschooling and then go back to the public or private high school. So there really are uh, a lot of uh, a lot of reasons why uh, why parents do that, but they all fall under the umbrella that they feel that now is the time when uh, something something has to something has to be different. Uh, they're going to choose this unconventional 
approach uh, for the sake of their kids' well-being at that time. And so, of course, there, there are academic reasons. Uh, some students flourish in an environment like a traditional high school. Some kids don't. Uh, some kids who have certain learning challenges find that they do better in a smaller setting. And, and ironically, even without a lot of the support that they would get in another setting, they've chosen to homeschool for those reasons, that they feel that their, their child is, is going to be able to progress uh, better in this environment. Families uh, have chosen to homeschool to have more time together and to be more a part of their, their children's upbringing. Uh, it's a lot of hours uh, at the school during the day. And so some families are choosing to homeschool to be closer together. So it, it really is a variety of things. We've had students who were very talented in dance or music, and they, they practice six hours a day. And of course, if you're doing that, you can't go to a traditional schooling setting to make that happen. You have to be able to do schooling in a different way so that the thing that you love the most and have been truly gifted in is the thing that you can spend most of your time on. Now, I know Massachusetts is one of the strictest states as far as the requirements for homeschoolers. Um, I think sometimes it discourages parents from jumping in because it's a real commitment. But if you have students that are particularly talented in, as you said, dance, how do they manage to fit the requirements academically into their schedule? Well, for instance, for our, for our dancers, uh, they tend to dance during the day. And so uh, they end up doing, uh, doing their work in the evening. So it's sort of flipping the school in the morning, sports in the afternoon for some families. Uh, it, the thing about homeschooling is you can homeschool anytime. And so uh, parents find uh, str strange times of day and sometimes weekends to make sure that the work is getting done to make room for those other things that are so important to the kids or to the family. Uh, I would say that most homeschoolers tend to do most of the core work during the Monday through Friday times. And they like to give their kids time in the afternoon, time in the evening to socialize and, and uh, get out of the house and get away from the books for a little while. One of the things that we, we find is that when we, when we work hard at, in a concerted way at the core work with homeschooling, there's, there's actually more leisure time. There's more time to do other very important things uh, for their uh, for their general well-being, so uh, that's exciting to see too. That that it's not school school all the time. All right now, somebody decides, okay, I want my kids to be homeschooled, but the parents don't know how to do that. Do you teach parents or advise parents on how to homeschool their kids? We don't do that officially, but we do put parents in touch with parents. So if someone comes to us saying, I'm brand new to this, I'm, I'm not sure how to do it, we will, we will put them in touch with a veteran homeschool parent that can help them. And again, it's, it's not one size fits all, but that person can give them the first steps. I mean, I, I think, you know, in dealing with the, the decision to transition into homeschooling, a number of you know, parts of your life have to change. And so having somebody guiding you along the way is, it has been very helpful. And so what we try to do is to give them a, you know, a, a person who's done this for a while and feels comfortable with it and can answer initial questions. Now, I did some research on homeschooling a few years ago. And I found it, number one, very difficult to find homeschoolers. Uh, and number two, they were somewhat reluctant to talk about what they were doing. Uh, I understand some of it, but do you think that that has changed over the past few years? Are they more willing to not just fly underneath the radar, but, but to be more public about it? 
I think so. Uh, homeschooling has grown over the last 10 years considerably. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the demographic has changed somewhat where you have, where you have folks from, from really all corners uh, attempting this. Um, I, I think become it's, because it's become mainstream or more mainstream, especially this last year, because so many folks were homeschooling even if they were distance learning, uh, with the school, the parents were on site you know, with their kids at their computers a lot of times. Um, because it's become a norm due to the pandemic, I think uh, I think it's become something that people want to talk about and are are more happy to uh, you know to give counsel on, especially for those who are who are doing it for the first time. Uh, I think too, it, it especially this year the number of homeschoolers has increased dramatically. I don't know if that will remain the case over the next couple of years. We, we definitely at New Hope had a couple of folks come and then uh, make the choice to go back to the school when, when it opened up again. But we've had some uh, come for the first time and, and stay and consider homeschooling going forward. So it will be really interesting to see how, what 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 piece of the pie of the education sector uh, homeschooling uh, will 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 be in the next uh, in the next five or ten years? It, 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 it's anybody's guess. Like so many things in culture right now after the pandemic. Now, just out of curiosity, how do your kids do in say ver the SATs versus just not going to see you at all and not homeschooling? I don't have data on, on that specifically, but I can say that our students tend to do pretty well in standardized testing. And I can say that they do very well in the college application process. So they tend to go uh, to uh, at least one of the schools that they wanted. Most of our kids go off to four-year school and, and many of them beyond to grad school. So, as, but as far as the, the standardized testing piece, it's, it, they, they do well enough <laughs> to achieve uh, the uh, success at the admissions process. So I, I, I feel good about that. As far as um, homeschoolers who, who don't use an organization like ours, uh, as compared to those who do, I'm, not sh I'm just not sure uh, what that data would look like. How long have you been doing this? We have been in business for over two decades, believe it or not, <laughs> and still love it. That's what I. That's what I always tell new families. I'm. I'm here because I love the work. I love the kids. I love working with these families who are thinking outside of the box. Um, we get so much support from the parents that that bring their kids to us. Uh, it's just a pleasure. It's it's a pleasure to do education in this way. So. So many of our staff too have have st they've stuck around for five, ten, fifteen years because they really love uh, the community that we have here at New Hope. Now, <clears throat> in Massachusetts, we also have charter schools, right? And two different kinds of charter schools, but um, the public schools try to discourage charter schools and and the government does as well because it's such a cap on them do you have any interaction at all with teachers administrators in charter schools i have some colleagues uh that work in that in that environment yes um and it, it's always been a pleasure to compare notes absolutely uh, yeah yeah, yeah. I, I tend to I'll put my cards on the table and say that I, I tend to be a pluralist when it comes to education, that I think that there need to be multiple options because there are many different kinds of kids. And so for me, I'm extremely comfortable with um, a public option. My, my mom was a public school teacher for 18 years when I was growing up. I was public school educated and, and uh, had many wonderful experiences in that environment. Um, I, I've seen the good work of charter schools. I've seen the good work of private, uh, parochial, and uh, religious schools. I've seen the good work of, of homeschooling families, co-ops, organizations like mine. I think we all have the same goal. We, we want these kids to be well-educated, <clears throat> but to, to grow into 
people who are uh, concerned for others and, and care about others' well-being. And so uh, I've seen kids flourish in a variety of environments where, it, where, where, where those things happen, where those goals are met. Uh, but I do think that there are times when, uh, you know, one sector isn't doing it as well. And in those moments, I think uh, parents look around <laughs> at other options. Fortunately, want the best for their kids. They have choices, which is wonderful. Yes. <clears throat> now you, you don't do elementary school. That's right. We do some workshops for elementary school kids, uh, but they're mostly enrichment based. And it's, it's really the younger siblings who, who come along and can do something at New Hope, but it's not the full curriculum. Yeah. Do, you, do you expect there will be more? getting into the elementary grades in the future? I do. I think that if the if homeschooling continues to grow or even plateaus at the high levels of uh, of the pandemic or close to it, I think there will be a need for that. Mm -hmm. I, especially okay. given that, you know, 30 years ago, it was more likely that uh, one parent would be home. Right. And so nowadays um, with the two income economy, we, we have uh, more, more often two parents um, working to both work and homeschool. And maybe someone is half time, um, but half time plus homeschool is a huge job. So <laughs> I, I think that as um, those realities uh, continue, I think there, there will be a need for some supplemental work in elementary outside of the home as well. Mm -hmm. Do you teach towards MCAS and STEM? We don't teach towards those standards, though we seek to meet or exceed the guidelines for Massachusetts. So uh, we, we, we do want to compare ourselves against the expectations of the public schools, and, and we, we like to exceed the expectations. <laughs> so that's our goal, <laughs> yeah. Well, now that the MCAS <clears throat> have now been put on pause, for who knows how long. Um, do you conduct your own testing? We don't. Uh, parents seek standardized testing when necessary. And uh, mo of course, most do in the, in the uh, college application process. Right, yeah. Because they, they, they need uh, outside affirmation that uh, all that they say in the transcript is true and correct. It needs to be substantiated. I think, that, I think that that also is a benefit of an organization like mine and other and other places like New Hope, where uh, out, folks outside of the home who are qualified can speak to the progress of the student and can um, <clears throat> again can 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 say similar things that the parents are saying that the kids are thriving uh, or not <laughs> in whatever area. Now, how do you deal with? Or do you deal with special needs children? We do. We have lots of kids who come to us uh, saying that for whatever reason in their district, it's just not working. And what we, <clears throat> this, is a, this is kind of a vague answer to that question in the sense that we have to work with every student individually and the particular needs of the students. Uh, we, we seek to try to determine what we can best provide for them in terms of coursework. There may be certain courses that it would be better to do in another way or elsewhere or with more support. Um, we are uh, constantly helping parents to connect with, with tutoring help uh, that, that may be necessary to be able to, uh, to handle the coursework that we're offering. Um, we, we try to work with anyone that we feel we are uh, trained to, <laughs> to help. Um, if there are learning challenges or LD issues that exceed what, what we're really trained to do, we, we make recommendations for other options. We want, we, we want the student to get the very best, and, and we have to admit at times <clears throat> that we're not qualified to give them what they need. But we do... Uh, we, we review IEPs, we work with parents on scaffolding and, and, and various ways to support the work at home. Um, you know, we, we care about each, we care about each kid 
And so we try to take each student, uh, you know, as, as he or she comes and, and to meet the needs that are presented. What, what towns are some of your students from? Like we're, we're in Beverly right now. Do you have any Beverly kids? We do have students from Beverly. Absolutely. Uh, all of the North shore towns, have sent kids to us, <laughs> uh, but we also have have gone up to Kittery, Maine, and down to Bill Ricca and over to Douglas and Sterling. So we have really? Central Mass students who come, yeah, and they and they drive an hour and twenty minutes to get to us. Sometimes it's really impressive. Uh, so so we draw we we draw widely, but we do concentrate on on the North Shore. Now, where is your campus located, Chris? In Boxford, Massachusetts, center of town. Yeah. Is it a, a... Right off of 495, so it's really pretty easy to get to. And off of 95, so it's, yes, you, you can kind of go back roads through 495, or you can just, it's, it's a mile away from the highway on 95. It's very nice. And <clears throat> how many students do you have at this point? We have uh, gone from a uh, hundred to one hundred and ten students off and on for the last five years. So uh, we we increased our student body and then have uh, have kind of stayed there over that time. The teachers that you have are they originally from the public schools or private schools or no schools? <laughs> are they like you know parents that have? done homeschooling themselves? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I'd say all of the above. <laughs> we, <laughs> yes. We, we have teachers who were trained to teach and teachers who have come into it uh, later in life and, and uh, just are phenomenal. Uh, so yes, uh, all of the all of the above. Now, do you have volunteers that come and help in the school as well? We do have parents and sometimes students who intern with us to volunteer to do tasks. And especially with COVID, we're, we're so grateful for all of the work that parents have done to do, especially during the time when all of the cleaning had to happen and, and, and the routine cleanings throughout the day. And parents have been, have been so amazing about just popping in, doing their 15 minute slot, uh, making sure that stuff gets done because we don't have a very big staff. So <laughs> it's, it's great. It's great to have their help on that. It's great to have the parents take part in it as well for, the, for themselves and for the school. Absolutely. <laughs> and we like to see them. You know, sometimes yeah. with, uh, with drop off and pick up, we don't get to see parents as often. And so we always love it when they're able to come in and spend a couple of minutes with us, tell us how it's going. Now, what do you have for tuition? Is there a, like a monthly tuition for each student or is it a, six months or a year or how do you deal with that it's tuition per course uh over the course of the year and so again it's kind of an a la carte menu so a family with two kids say one in high school and one in middle school could decide to take um english and chemistry for the high schooler and intro to spanish and art for the middle schooler say and then the cost of each course would, which is uh, based on the number of hours, would then be um, would be added to the invoice. So it's 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 not one size fits all. It's That's good. you pay for you pay for what you buy, which we love actually. It's 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 kind of neat on a, no, a number of levels. It it gives parents <laughs> a freedom to 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 use a you know one course from our service or or to do all of their core with us. So they could do either model or anywhere in between. Um, but it also sets up a bit of a free market in, uh, you know, what happens year to year in that uh, the very best teachers get, um, you know, get full courses. Um, and, um, and, and, and if there are improvements needed, we see that in registration. And so we sometimes are able to be self-correcting faster because, we're hearing from families about what they want more than other things. And how many so students are, are in a class? We go, up, we go up to 12. We, we shoot for eight to 12, somewhere in, in that. 
we, we will do a class of six. We find that uh, really getting 10 or 12 kids in a classroom is, is the right amount of voices. If you go up to 24 or 30, uh, which I experienced a little of when I was in school, uh, you, you know, Couple, couple kids talk and everybody else sort of sits there. Um, so we, we really like, we have, we, we have the Harkness model. So, so everyone is not around a particular table, but around tables around the room. So it is, it's a round table discussion uh, or round table activities all the time. That's how we teach. So we want everybody to take ownership for their participation in class. And we expect that everybody comes with something to offer. And we find, by and large, that that's true. So <laughs> it's not a curiosity, because we're getting low on time, but I'm, I'm just curious. I know when I was in high school in a previous life, uh, I, I'd go back to the school once in a while to see a couple of my teachers who I really enjoyed having. Do kids come back after a while, you know, after being a year in college and coming back to say hello? They sure do, and they'll come and they'll sit in class. <laughs> and I always all right. say, "All right, we're going to take a second for for you guys to give college advice," and they'll they'll give their you know top three uh, you know rules for surviving college, and it's a lot of fun because the kids that are still finishing out you know high school, um, it, it builds their confidence that they can do it. It's going to be okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we do have alumni days too. It's been tough over the last year and a bit. But overall, uh, we, we tend to have two or three alumni days during the year, and we always have kids come back in these kind of big groups. And they'll come, you know, six or seven of them at a time and sit in the back of the classroom. We'll get them pizza at lunch, and we'll all get to talk and find out how they're doing in college or in their jobs. It's a lot of fun. Do you have any trade school type kids that aren't going to college? We do have a couple, absolutely. And our, our feeling on that has always been that, you know, there isn't one answer, just as there isn't one answer for education for high school, there isn't one answer for your vocation in life. And so we encourage the kids to get a good, rich high school experience and then to decide what they want to do next. And yes, some of them go into the trades. Absolutely. We also have kids who take a year off to figure it out. So there's a growing uh, popularity in this in, in the gap year, and the gap year, you know, the, the, the usually the, the student works uh, almost full time, maybe takes a course at community college or a course at one of the local schools, and um, and, and thinks about kind of what comes next. And I've found for a number of our students, it's been so really gratifying to see this, where they take that time and they they've been in the workforce, they realize. Uh, you know, what it's like and, and what they want and what they don't want. And then they have a plan <laughs> and they may not have had a plan senior year. So that's, a, that's a, again, it, things, have, uh, things have become less concrete over time, not more so. All right. Why don't you just tell people how to get in touch with you if, if they have any interest? Absolutely. Please just go to our website at newhopecourses.org or you can call at 978 9658601 Okay so new hope new hope courses.org that's the key okay great well chris we um appreciate you being on the show this was fascinating interview learning all this stuff and i i hope it benefits the the people who are watching because it seems to be the thing to do now for whatever reason so Thank you for, for coming and uh, pre appreciate your time. And we hope Thank you, you both. I'm very up. grateful. We'll invite you back on again. We'll hope you will come. I'm glad to come again. Thank you. Good. Thank you.